Today I got Caleb over helping me. We're working on the New Holland chain baler. Um, I was baling actually over at his place the other day and one of the chain idler bearings went out. So uh, I bought all new ones, so we're putting those in now. There's, I think there's 14 of them total. We've gotten a few done here already, but that's what we're, we're working on right now. Side. Uh -huh. Oh, we can just take that yeah. one. I can work on putting this together while. Wow. Alright. I hear him somewhere up there. Alright, thanks, Jordan. Alright. Well, shucks. What you doing? I'm just cleaning all the old greasy hay dust off of here so I can put the new bearing in. Figured I might as well change all of them because I mm -hmm. don't really want to have a baler fire if we can avoid that. Mm -hmm. I have replaced these before. It's been a long time ago. Now we Put, take the old bearing out and put the new one in. Snap ring. And after the third time I hit my finger, I got a pliers. Enough of that. One's out in the scrap barrel. I nice hit. <clears throat> New one. Garbage can. Garbage can. Those are garbage can. Stand back. Is it in? Done. Oh, no. Another one. Need any more done? Oh, yeah, we got a few more. I think we got about six, five or six left. Six or five? I think there's 14 total. Mm -hmm. Dad, can you sharpen this again? It's not sharp enough. 
No. Sorry, buddy. I gotta climb up there. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Saturday, July 16th. A couple days after we were putting the bearings in that round baler. Uh, got a few different projects going on today. Yesterday, I cut my grandpa's last field of hay. I think it's about 18, 20 acres, something like that. Um, a lot of trefoil in it. It's an old field. It hasn't been turned for probably 30 years, but trefoil and it's still really growing good so we just keep cutting it um anyway i'm hoping it's hot kind of muggy today it's supposed to be cloudy so not a real good drying day it did dry a fair bit yesterday while i was cutting but um sounds like no rain till tuesday i think monday night i'm hoping to bail it monday there was more trefoil in there than i figured so i'm hoping that dries um, right now I'm going to get the, I got the little farm all bee on the tether. I'm going to get that fired up a couple spots down there. I'm going to do that are a little bit tricky, get around the outside edge and one other little spot. Then I'll have Justin take over and get that tethered out. Um, cause I want to get that, see if we can get that dry to bale Monday. It's supposed to be like 91 or two on Monday. So should dry then. Um, I hope, hopefully by then anyway, but, uh, back to the baler here bearings are all done that actually went pretty good i had caleb friend of mine he come and help me last time we did those bearings we had that main apron chain out of there so it made that job a lot easier but with two people this wasn't bad but one other thing i need to do on this once i get justin going on the tether um this chain here i got the guard off but uh, i got to get a new chain for this um, this chain is just worn out. It's got a spring-loaded tensioner here. And uh, last time we were bailing with it, that chain came off and it got wrapped up in there and it bent the tensioner and caused a bunch of trouble anyway. So we got it straightened, tensioner straightened back out and stuff. But that chain is so worn, it just doesn't want to track good anymore. So I'm going to get that, get that on there. I got the old Gale skid steer. If you've been anybody's been wondering about that, we got an older uh, 4400 Gale. Pretty rough machine, but it still works. Um, but it had two hydraulic hoses that blew out going to the one lift cylinder. And I got it in the shop. I'll show you that in a minute. I had to pull the seat off to get at those. And uh, I'm gonna go get one of them today. I had a one hose here and get some oil. We can get that back in action. I got the seat and the bracket pulled off. Both of the hoses go into this cylinder. Um, blew out. They were really pretty bad shape. But they were underneath this valve body. So without the with the seat on there, I couldn't get at it. So anyway, I'm going to get them in there. Hopefully later today. And... Uh, and I think this thing definitely in major need of a pressure washing because it's pretty nasty in there, especially with all that oil that leaked out. So I'll probably try to do that too before I put everything back together.
that the 27th of May, uh, that was the first field that I planted, and it's looking really nice. A lot, way better than it did last year, that's for sure. Amazing what a little water will do. All right, well, here we are down here. Um, this field, we've always called it the flat, so if you hear me talk about the flat, this is it. Um, it's probably about the flattest field we have. Uh, not that we have horrible hills, but anyway, um, like I said, this is, it's been 30 years since this has been plowed. Uh, it's good dirt down here. It's all river bottom ground, pretty much. The river runs right over here and another one runs there. So oftentimes this will flood in the spring, which I think helps the soil quite a bit. But it's very odd shaped. If you look at this field from an aerial view, it's shaped kind of like a cowboy boot. It uh, comes up here, it's pretty wide there, widest in the middle, and then it comes to a point over there. I think that's part of the reason it hasn't been plowed more often. I think it's kind of a pain to plow, but I don't know, I've never plowed it. So um, anyway, I'm gonna get the tether set up. I'm gonna make the outside round, uh, just a little easier for me to do that so you're not throwing it off into the woods. And then we'll get Justin started on here. that little patch done uh, now I can turn him loose on the rest I'm gonna run back up and get a couple of washers to tighten up the throttle lever on there a little bit because it keeps wanting to pop out of that one notch but he can get rolling here to start with and uh, I'll buzz back down and see if we can tighten that up you ready you ready All right, well, we'll get a couple washers and come back.
Paul's here gonna give me a hand with this. Justin's still down tedding. Um, so we're gonna get this roller chain replaced. I just bought a 10 foot roll, so measure out what we need and uh, we'll cut that off. Get, get a new chain in there. Oh yeah, it's pretty worn out. Pretty floppy. Well, I'll go cut off the new chain and stick it back in there. Well, I got it back on there. I forgot to have the camera on when I was putting it on there, but it wasn't too eventful. This uh, tensioner arm here got kind of bent. Actually, in this sprocket here, this was a tinny or sprocket that was on here it took some of the teeth off so this is a different idler i got on there it's a little heavier one but i think it's running pretty true i might have to try to twist it a little bit more to get it so the chain doesn't ride up on it but we'll fire it up now and uh, get it running just see how it tracks on there um i did have somebody mention once i was running this how noisy the chain was um and the main reason for that is these are the idlers here we put the bearings in and there's 14 of them in here all together but i don't know it's kind of hard to tell um they're getting really grooved inside of there they're supposed to be pretty much smooth but um those grooves in there sometimes the chain will kind of rattle like this one here how well you can see it but that one's fairly smooth but there was actually one on here i had took off taken off and took it to the grinder and kind of ground those ridges down a little bit because it was making a lot of noise but it cost more than the baler's worth to put all them in there brand new that's why we never did it but uh if they get too loud i just grind them down a little but these weren't too bad but that's why it clatters so much is just because of that and somebody had also mentioned actually i've had a couple comments on it with what i've been bailing with this how much Oh, I should have had more hay in the windrows, how this baler will take such a big windrow. And yeah, I you're right. I mean, this thing, I've taken some windrows that fill up the whole pickup, no problem. This baler will really eat hay. But when I've got thinner hay like that, if it's pretty fine hay, we used to always put four together, sometimes six together. Um, but then when you're dragging a lot of it across the field, every time you rake it, you lose a little bit too. And I was kind of in a hurry didn't have somebody to run another rake to pull two in so i just ran with the v rake and did it but yeah this baler will eat definitely eat a big windrow all right we'll fire it up here and see what it see what it does
that we lunch in the field. Thank you.